I met Pedro in Santa Barbara in the fall of 2013. I had just returned from a two-month backpacking trip in Portugal that had turned my world upside down and was quite excited to find the Portuguese Pedro subletting a room in the house I was about to move into. He had just been hired as a Portuguese lecturer at UCSB, where I was completing my master's in Spanish. We exchanged stories and quickly figured out that we had to have crossed each other just weeks before at a bar in Porto, Espaço 77. There was an instant click. One of my favorite things about him is that, no matter how educated and refined he may get, he is always ready to honestly laugh at the lowest of lowbrow comments possible. He is unharmed by his erudition in that it does not distance him from others, it simply adds to the levels in which he can connect and exist. He is just as comfortable making dick jokes at 4am in a Portuguese dive bar as he is citing poetry in the halls of Brown University. And most importantly, he introduced me to my wife. Pedro stayed for his second year of teaching at UCSB, whereas I left a year after his arrival and temporarily moved to L.A. About a week before I left Santa Barbara, a new French teacher arrived to the university. Pedro and her would go on to form a deep friendship over the following months. As is the case when you love somebody, you want them to meet the other people you love. And so Pedro insisted that she and I meet. And that was it. There was no more letting go. Pedro eventually appears in my novel, and I have decided to never allow myself to be certain whether his presence is indeed that of another Pedro, or if it's just myself after that first transformative trip to Portugal, a new Portuguese Pedro. It is him who, after showing our IDs to a confused bartender in Santa Barbara, whiskey in hand, refutes my idea for the end of the novel and gets the last line. I'm also certain my mom is secretly in love with him. This is... Rich chocolatey goodness. I think we can start now. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Not much. How are you? Uh, good. Inside a closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, drinking mezcal in a closet. <laughs> it's a usual tradition. I just have notes that I made at the very beginning when I had the idea to make the podcast and I made little notes notes next to people's names. Uh, so I'll, I'll read those to you. <laughs> it says, Pedro Almeida. So note number one, two Pedros walk into a bar. Uh, that's supposed to remind me of something. It kind of does. Number two, it says farting at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and number three says Japan, Tokyo, Pinopticon. Okay. So, that, is that uh, Pinopticon with an A after the P? No, no, no. Peeing. I, I do remember that one because I made that after I came back from Japan. Ah. So I wrote this because maybe this will take us in the right direction. Um, I was, uh -huh. was in Tokyo and... Right. Uh, after living in Paris for a while, you get really frustrated because nobody lets you use a restroom. In the U.S., it's pretty normal to just walk into any restroom, a bookstore, any, any store. It's kind of understood that you can walk into the restroom. Uh, not in Paris. Uh, uh -huh. Well, in Portugal, you, you, you have to buy something usually in Portugal, too. Yeah, like beer or coffee, which makes you want to pee. Yes. So yes. It's not... Usually, it's you know people do the coffee thing. Because it's the cheapest also. Yeah. Well, anyway, in Tokyo, people were extremely nice. And I just like peed all over the city. Uh, mm. I went to this one particular toilet in the uh, Tokyo station. We were trying to get the fast train. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was set up where there was like... Uh, fuck, I don't know the word. Urinoir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, urinals? Yeah, shit. Oh yeah, there were, <laughs> there were urinals set up uh, 
all around the wall. So you walked in and it was like a circle. And there was a your, circle? Like urinal. And you, were, were you inside the circle or outside of the circle? So it's like you walk in, there's a door. To your right, there's a urinal. To the left, there's a urinal. And in between, there's a circle of urinals. Okay. So it's a circle and the peers are around the circle or inside the circle. Around the circle. So that's really cool in terms of privacy because everybody's giving the back. I mean, you're kind of sideways, but everybody's Right. Because if, if it were the opposite... You would you'd have to you know maintain eye contact with all the peers. Yeah, like, they do it. like the showers at the gym in Santa Barbara. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're trying to you're trying to pee in the shower and you yeah. have to be looking at everybody's dick while you do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the the only downside to it was that like first I peed, it's like wow these Japanese people they know how to how to treat man <laughs> and, uh, but then i went to wash my hands and the hands was a similar situation but it was like a column in the center of the bathroom uh, so there were sinks in a circle but you have mirrors uh, to look at yourself uh -huh. so what you end up is having a mirror where you could see everybody peeing behind you wow so but you see their asses right yeah you don't see their dicks you see their asses yeah yeah but still like you're you're looking in front and you see somebody peeing, and then you look at the mirror, and you see the reflection of peeing. And, uh, and I thought, like, uh, like this is a, like a panopticon. This is the panopticon. That's perfect. That's, that's beautiful. And I walked out, and I wanted, to, I wanted to share that joke. I wonder what Foucault would have done with that. I no, know. That's amazing. <laughs> I wanted to share this with somebody, and I walked out, and I was very excited. I was like, eh. Uh, Ah, uh, I need to share this. I need to share this joke, <laughs> and I, and I thought about you. No, it's it's amazing. I said, who do I know that would enjoy a joke as stupid as that, <laughs> but that would have the knowledge to uh, you know, to to enjoy the fact that it's a yes. clever reference. No, it's perfect. Uh, that is the perfect heteropia. <laughs> <laughs> It is not as good as the original I have to work on. No, and the funny thing is, on a practical level, some people open the zipper while they pee, but some people put a little bit of the pants down, just enough for the butt to pop out, you know? <laughs> and while you are washing your hands, you can see just the butts all around. <laughs> Wait, do you, do you lower your pants? When you... I, do lower my, I do lower my pants. Yeah, I yeah, I don't like the feeling of stranglement. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you don't do it through the, through the zipper? Um, yeah, so it would be funny to have yeah the butt cheeks popping out in that in that particular circumstance where you know that there is someone seeing you in the mirror. Just the butt cheeks, obviously. Yeah, well, I've always wanted to do that. But I've never been brave enough. I have a couple of practical jokes in my head that I've never been <laughs> One of them is to uh, go pee at a public restroom and pull my pants down like a kid. <laughs> you know, when you were a kid, you would just like throw your I pants down. I sometimes and, uh, <laughs> pull my pants down. <laughs> just to, just to like, make people around you feel awkward. <laughs> That's one. The other one is... Uh, waiting for somebody to say an unfunny joke at a party and then sarcastically laugh in a very exaggerated way and then force myself to pee my pants <laughs> as I continue to pretend to laugh and then just like spend the rest of the party with my pants full of pee. <laughs> that, I really... That's a good one. That's a good one. I... I'd love to see that one happen. Me too. I really hope. I, I don't want to die without doing that. It's very, it requires a lot of commitment. <laughs> and you can't waste that. You can only do that once. So, you know. Right, right. I mean, you can do it over and over again, but, you know, it might turn into something else. Yeah. But I can also imagine that. I can picture someone that does that every fucking weekend. Can you imagine? <laughs> 
<laughs> like every weekend at some point. Okay, you just did it. <laughs> so that was note number three, the Pinopticon. The Pinopticon, that's a very good one. So this reminds me of another thing, um, which I should have said. May I just before. add something? Don't forget what you're saying. You know, just, just a, a footnote on the Pinopticon mm -hmm. <clears throat> before, we, <clears throat> before we forget about that. For some reason, every time I think about the Panopticon, I think about, you know, crazy people running in circles with their, um, how do you say camisa de forces in English? You know, the... the, the, the... Straight jackets. Yes. With the straight jackets on running in circles. That, that's, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's totally, you know... Are they running um, like... Automatic response. Like in a giant circle or a circle in place? No, a, a giant circle, just running around a giant circle, you know, running along the wall. Mm. You know what? That that's that's my 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 panoptican image. Someone just running in circles, trying to you know, like <clears throat> dogs when they're trying to chase their tails. Are they trying to get I, out, or, or is it just for fun, or just because they're crazy? I I think that yeah, it's basically incorporating the the the, the role somehow, like. Embodying the role of the crazy person inside the panopticon. Can you explain what a panopticon is? Because I still don't know who our audience will be. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was not ready for this. It's been a long since the last time I read I tricked it. you, <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> so the panopticon was a device invented if I'm not mistaken, in the late 18th or early, 20, or early 19th century in mental health institutions. And uh, it, it, it is a, it is, it's actually a structure, so an architectonic device that is circular. And the, the, the founding principle of the panopticon is no matter how many people are inside the panopticon, there will always be a position of surveillance, and that is the person who is controlling or managing the, um, you know, the crazy people, the mentally disabled ones. And the principle, therefore, is you never know whether or not you are being watched at a certain moment, but you know that you can be watched in every single position inside the panopticon. But you'll never know exactly when you're being watched. So you will always behave as if you are being watched, even if you are not being watched at that specific moment. And that's, you know, that's the that's why the device was so effective, because you actually, at the end of the day, do not even need to have someone watching over the 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 crazy mad people running in circles. Just the structure conveys that sense of being watched 24 7. obviously most of the times you have yes in someone a guy on the top of the tower watching um watching everyone but the structure of the building sort of conveys that feeling of total surveillance uh, and it's called panoptican precisely because of that you know optican is vision or um, um you know c and pan is all so it's basically the place where you can be seen from every single angle. Um, is, is that accurate? Is that it? I don't know. I, like... <laughs> <laughs> I, just know it, I just know from that urinal place in Tokyo. So right now I'm, I'm thinking about the P-Optican and, you know, this, the guy, the straight jacket, his dick out. Obviously, his dick is. Uh, he, he cannot control it because you know his arms are are inside the straight jacket. So he's just being all over and running in circles, and the dick is totally out of control because obviously he's in a straight jacket um, inside the pinopticon. 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 I apologize. Yeah, you think? I wonder if that whoever designed that bathroom had an idea like that if it was just like uh like if it was just like this way we could fit all the toilets all the urinals so it's more effective or if it was just like yeah this way yeah nobody's gonna be 
pissing on the wall for fun or jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, <laughs> I went to uh, Warsaw for a weekend and uh, oh. shit, like vodka is really, really cheap. <laughs> and uh, how was it? It was super fun. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a cultural visit. This was like two years ago. I think I told you. It wasn't a cultural visit. It was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, free, yep. I mean, cheap air flight. I think I paid like a air. I think I paid like 40 euros or something for a return trip. And a friend was over there. So it was just, uh, let's go drink and eat good food for cheap. And anyway, at what point I was waiting for a urinal. And the guy just was taking way too long. I said, fuck, I need to pee. I need to pee. And I was waiting, waiting, waiting. And then, you know, I wasn't looking at him. It was the only urinal. And then uh, I started getting really, like, uh, desperate. And I got a little bit closer and I saw that he was he was masturbating. Really? Yep. So, but, but <laughs> was he aware that he could be seen from that? Yeah, I mean, he was in a public restroom with... Uh, <laughs> It was like a very simple restroom. You walk in, there's a sink and a mirror. If you walk to the right, there's a little urinal with a tiny wall. And next to that, there's a little stall. Somebody mm -hmm. was shitting in the stall. It smelled like shit. I was waiting for the urinal and this guy was taking too long. It turns out because he was uh, masturbating. But you wouldn't see that in Japan. That doesn't happen. Or you would see a circle where everybody's masturbating. <laughs> 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 maybe that was also the intention well this took a very low brow turn very fast it did <laughs> Wait, before I, before i forget because i uh, i think this is the way it's gonna go um so one of the things i like to do in the show is that we have to come up with a title for it at the end of the yeah. episode so okay. kind of trying to either things we talked about or some memory or something, and then we figure out a title. So I think okay. Pinopticon right now is kind of. I, I love yeah. It's kind of that's, a strong that, strong contender. Yeah. That's that's my face. That's me. But who knows? Who knows? Uh huh. Uh huh. So uh, two two nights ago, uh -huh. uh, it was my birthday, and uh, Elise took me to a. Uh, uh, mm. it was delicious and I was looking at the menu and uh, mm -hmm. I had uh, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and Elise had some uh, puñeta de sal <laughs> <laughs> puñeta de bacalhau <laughs> 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 It was a nice place. It was a nice restaurant where it wasn't an expensive thing, but you could see that it was a chef who was right. giving a twist to home cooking. I mean, I, I would like a twist in my pinata to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, re I respect that. I respect, you know, some people like it. <laughs> Not my case, personally. <laughs> And, well, I was trying to be uh, some, uh, you know, not a kid and not laugh at the thing like, <laughs> and I couldn't. I, I laugh every time I read it. Well, I kept quiet because I wasn't sure because it's the same word in Spanish, uh, like for jerking off. Uh, and I thought, like, maybe it's not the same thing in Portuguese. I don't, I'm not, I wasn't sure if I'd heard it in Portuguese. So I was just laughing on the inside, but then uh, the people behind us asked the waitress, and the waitress was not Portuguese. I was like, "What is this uh, puñeta?" And she's like, <laughs> and I was like giggling. Yeah, <laughs> and he asked like, "What's going on?" It's like it's just funny for me to hear that word. Like everybody's like puñeta, puñeta, puñeta. <laughs> and so the waitress was like, "Well, I don't know. Like, let's ask the chef." And she calls the chef. The chef comes over, and it's this uh, young Portuguese guy. And they ask, <laughs> they ask him, "Su quase pinheta?" And in French, it's even funnier. <laughs> well, apparently in French, you also say uh, "poignet," I think. So. Oh, 
Oh, that. What? What's, what's the meaning of? Um, is that related to fist? In, in yeah. So it's so it's the same thing. Like yeah, you make a puño, so puñeta. Uh -huh. And you make a poignet, so your fist. So yeah, it's a fist. Um, so it exists in French too, and uh, apparently the the chef got really red, and he was uh, <laughs> explaining like, yeah, the old the old people call this dish. Uh, so can you uh, can you give me some uh, explanation? Is there such a dish, or is these guys just having fun making people order puñeta? <laughs> No, it, it, you know there is, and there it's it's been around forever, I guess. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the reason is why they call it punyete. Uh, so when 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 I took some time to think about that, um, and you know it was an event in my life, taking some time to <laughs> consider the origins of punyete. <laughs> When I, when I, you know, when I um, seriously uh, reflected upon that, the only reason that I found was, you know how it is made, right? You have, like, so you have... Masturbating? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dad. <laughs> you grab some honey, you, uh, all the, you rub it all, all over your butt cheeks. <laughs> you have Take the... a picture of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you have this salt dried cod, you know, it's and, and, and it's been into water for for a few days, and then what you what you want to do is you want to remove the what's the word for that farpas, you know, little pieces, tiny little pieces of of the codfish. The like the bones, uh... no, not like it, it, no, the meat, you know, the, the meat of the codfish. You want to just tear it apart in small little pieces, raw, obviously, right? Um, does that make any sense? But it's already been cooked in salt, no? Why do you mean cooked in salt? Like, hasn't it been salted already? Like... It's not cooked. Oh, Pugnete is, Pugnete is not cooked usually. But it's been kept in salt, no? Like preserved. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm not very yeah. smart. <laughs> I don't. I thought that meant it was cooked. <laughs> right. I thought can, I could just put salt me? on my steak and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I need to be ready to eat after five minutes. <laughs> uh... <laughs> so it's it's you know it's um it's the raw thing and you have to you know tear it apart in little pieces. And I remember seeing my grandmother uh, uh, um, doing it because um, my mom didn't, she didn't like to do... Uh, yeah, she did, she did. <laughs> <laughs> but I clearly remember seeing my, my, my grandmother doing it. And um, she did it in a very fast way. Because you know that's 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 how we have to do it in order to to get these little pieces of cod um, that are supposed to be as long as a little bit as as, as the onion that comes with 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 um, with the dish. So she was like <clears throat> furiously tearing it apart, <laughs> removing pieces, removing pieces of cod, and in a way, you know. The kind of movement with the fist that she was doing for several minutes is like <laughs> those fists of fury, <laughs> <laughs> and that you know it, it kind of resembles a hand job <laughs> in a way, um, destructive hand job. But but did you ever hear like the older people laughing about it too, like? Oh yeah, yeah, Maria. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, my 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 grandparents always laughed when they 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 offered pinheta. and they you know it, it was a very common dish uh, at home, um, but there was always a laugh that came with it. Well, that's nice, nice and wholesome. Yeah. Uh, so what's up? We haven't spoken in a very long time. 
What's keeping you up at night? What puts a smile on your face when you wake up? Uh, I'm working on the prelims. That's the boring stuff. I'm uh, preparing them still. I think I last time I saw you, I, I, I told you that I would be done with them around September. Well, surprise, surprise, I'm not what yet. Are, what are prelims? Forgive me, I've already quit one PhD and I've not advanced much in my second <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten that far. Also known as preliminary exams uh -huh. are a set of two, day, two days um, written exams um, where one, that's a beautiful sound. That's yeah. exactly the sound I make every time I think about my prelims. <laughs> where you are supposed to sort of narrow down your research interests and be examined on, you know, two specific um, areas. That's it. Okay. And so you didn't finish that? So I'm, 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 I'm working on, 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 on those, <clears throat> uh, trying to make some progresses, also doing two, um, two courses here. Teaching? Um, Ed Brown. Teaching? Uh, nope, no teaching this year. I got a fellowship. Oh, cool. uh, so. No, I remember that. Yeah. But so you're taking two courses? I thought you were done with exactly. courses. Exactly. I could be. I you know I I only had to take one more course, and that's because I got this fellowship. But um, you know, might as well. So I'm just taking two courses this semester. Um, which is fun. I'm organizing a union for grad students here. I don't know who the audience will be, but uh, if there's someone listening um, who attends Brown or to, that goes to Brown, let's vote yes. <laughs> Trust the guy with all the pee, poo, and dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so the... We'll air this after elections. <laughs> So that's it. Um, uh, I organized the, the Brazilian Film Festival two weeks ago. Um, working on a film series for next year. Um, and and now that I put it like these, that I you know my, that I make the list, my life sounds extremely boring. Um, well, no, it sounds I very just, nice. I just want to put no, no. It's even it's. I just want to put it out there. It's like it sounds like there's nothing. Um, besides um, being a grad student, which is only half true. <clears throat> well, I wish mine was nothing but being a grad student, so, so shut the fuck up. No, <laughs> no please. Let me, tell, let me talk about some exciting stuff I've been doing lately. That's, you know, more interesting than, 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 than the grad student part of that song. Yeah, I was going to ask you some more stuff, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, I started seeing a new therapist, psychotherapist. Cool. <laughs> what happened to the old? And this is the fun part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's 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 actually really really good because the um, you know so my new therapist has this um, method. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's called the um, IFS which stands for internal family systems. Mm -hmm. And so the basis of this method is we all have inside us different personalities, right? And these personalities <clears throat> or personae sort of correspond to three major characters. And we all have them. It's like, you know, um, no matter who you are or, you know, what you do or whatever. We all have these three core characters fighting inside us. And the three characters are the managers, the firefighters, and the exiles. Right? Can you hear me? Are you following? I can hear you. Uh, I need more information. <laughs> okay. I can understand. So the managers... Yeah, our, in, our internal managers, well, you know, manage stuff and try to um, try to keep you functional, 
try to keep things working, you know. Um, that's one of the characters. The other one, the firefighters, um, try to put down crisis, basically. So it's, you know, it's that part of your character, of you know, that part of you that comes and tries to shut down um, the, you know, when, when shit happens, basically. So that's the firefighter. And you keep using it every time to sort of solve or keep crisis at a low. And then there's the, the, the final group, uh, the exiles. Um, let me look it up because I don't remember exactly what the exiles do. They rape and pillage. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> oh, the exiles are the upset ones. So it's that part of you who, <clears throat> who is like, um, you know, really sad and upset about things, and they're just um, you want to sort of keep it bay in a way. Um, mm. Yeah, but there's an interesting sentence here: binging on drugs alcohol, food, sex, or work are common firefighter activities. Who the fuck binges on work? <laughs> <laughs> Firefighters do. All right. um, so, yeah. So, we are trying to um, going through these, these you know, uh, characters. And it's, it's really cool. And it keeps me uh, thinking about Flint Soa all the time, for obvious reasons, right? Because you're Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess. Uh, it, it makes sense, right? You know, this kind of... Uh, yes, this... yes, but, uh, you know, yeah. tell our audience. <laughs> okay. So those, um, those people that were not uh, aware of what a panopticon was. <laughs> so Flipso is pretty much the same as the panopticon. <laughs> um, it's uh, so it, it, it's it, you know early twentieth century Portuguese author, poet, author of novels and uh, whatnot, uh, whose main a uh, distinguished feature was that it created a multitude of personae, you know, fake characters that had a biography of their own, their own style of writing, their own, you know, jobs, their own family, their own biography, and all that shit. Um, and each one of them was totally individualized. Um, and, 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 and so... Fernando Pessoa called them eternims, atronyms. It's, it's, and it's it, it, it's interesting because it, it reminded me of this, um, you know, internal family of managers, firefighters, and exiles. Um, I don't this know, I think I'm... The, this thing about the firefighters makes me think. This what? This thing about the firefighters, because... Uh... Mm -hmm. So I went, this this job that I have right now, and which mm -hmm. I hate because it's mm -hmm. like just drying up old poetry inside of me. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to that interview, uh -huh. it was like <laughs> the worst interview I've ever had. <laughs> and uh, we had, I mean, I just didn't care anymore. I was like, I just want a fucking job. Um, and uh, the guy was really nice. What 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 was the worst moment of the interview? Uh, he asked me to explain the difference between uh, two verbal tenses, and I didn't know what the difference was. This is uh, as an English teacher, and uh, so he asked you to to explain the difference between two verb tenses. Yeah, he said like, "What's the difference between the the? Oh. I don't know. I don't remember what he asked. Like the present continuous and the the past perfect. I don't know something like that. What a jerk." I mean, it's all right. He's hiring a language teacher. It's it, it, it's normal. But I couldn't answer. Okay. And instead of answering honestly, saying, like, listen, dude, like, uh, 
like I don't know the name uh, of it, but I know how to. I know how it works. <laughs> you know, I just right. I just don't. Like, if you tell me, like, give me the present continuous of this, I don't know. Maybe I should know it. Yeah, and that's what he said. He's like, look, you've been using it while you've been talking, so I know that. I know that it's okay. Uh -huh. But anyway, but that put me in a kind of tense moment because rather than saying that, I uh -huh. I try to get out of it by pretending that I was answering a different question. Uh, and he, like totally different question or slightly different question? Uh, something that I could have... I pretended that I misunderstood his question, so I answered that other question, uh -huh. so I didn't have to answer that. And that was... It was shitty on my part. And he didn't... You know, he's not stupid, so he just... Uh, right, right. But what about this? <laughs> and he, like, uh -huh. he didn't let it go. So he understood. Yeah, so I, he caught me. So then it was like double shame. Anyway, so then we... Um, We <laughs> oh, shit. We go down and he says, you can leave your stuff here. And then we're in the middle of the interview and then the fire alarm goes on. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. Uh, like, it's, it's just a, like, it's probably a drill. Because he's really loud, like, eh, 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 eh. And everybody has to get out. So we walk, the, the office thing has two floors and uh, we go down to the bottom mm -hmm. floor. We're on the sixth floor we go down to the fifth floor which is still the same uh, company everybody starts walking out and he tells me like just leave your stuff there like in the like by his desk and i understood like you can just wait there because in my head it's just a fire drill nothing's gonna happen you know we just need to do the thing uh -huh. so i just like i sit down uh -huh. and like he goes out and then he comes back it's like like what, dude, like, what? <laughs> he comes back that office was empty <laughs> And I'm just sitting there in the chair, all alone in, in the whole office. And it's a lot like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> and just, the fact that he, that I understood that he said, wait there. And I was like, all right, I'll wait here. And I thought about it like, he must have thought I was just a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like later I was thinking like why did I react like that and I realized it's because that's that shit's going on in my head like non-stop it's been a fucking fire alarm for like three years <laughs> <laughs> like this whole time I've been like that dog meme like just engulfed in flames and just like it's alright it's alright <laughs> just wait so <laughs> it's perfectly natural to just sit there alright <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and then when he asked this whole shit is on is on, is on flames yeah yeah so when he asked me like i had the choice either to say like i i couldn't explain like listen man my whole fucking life is a building on fire or <laughs> i'm used to this and uh I, you know it's a job interview so i had to like do another <laughs> thing where, like oh i misunderstood <laughs> what you said must have been must have been the noise or something <laughs> but they were pretty <laughs> desperate for a teacher <laughs> Uh, that's 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 amazing you could have you know made it explicit like okay i know that i tried to fool you on that question but look at me reacting to this fire alarm right now as if nothing's going on <laughs> you want somebody that follows instructions <laughs> <laughs> you want someone that can respond to crisis yeah. Someone who's not easily Work scared. under pressure. Yeah. That's what I would say. Because that's what it felt like, really. Like, that that was a clear reflection of what's going on inside. Like, everything's fucking crumbling down. And there's no time for every, anything. And uh, it's like, it's cool. Let's just uh, sit down and uh, read this book. That, remind, that's amazing. that reminds me of that story. I think I told you this already. You remember... This one time, that, I mean, it was before moving to the U.S. I was um, uh, I was doing, doing my master's back then. And I had this class, I was taking this class where it was just two of us and the professor. So we were at the professor's office, you know, it, it was not worth it to book a room for, you know, just the three of us. And the office was this like tiny, tiny little room, I don't know two uh maybe three square meters a really tiny thing and at the end of the class at the end of the seminar you know we were all sitting at the same table like very very small table so we were 
you know, physically like 30, 20, 30 centimeters away from each other in the room. And the professor at the end of the class, you know, we were done, we were closing our notebooks and she stands up. And as, as she stands up, the trousers just fall to the floor. They just fall down to the ground. And all of a sudden, the professor is there in her underwear in front of us. And we were sitting, you know, like 20 centimeters away from her. And we did not know how to react to that. And what we did was just pretend it was normal. <laughs> that she was standing up in her, in her underwear in front of us. And uh, to our surprise, she did exactly the same. <laughs> she just goes like, <laughs> now this is a good one. My pants just fell to the ground. <laughs> well, at least she acknowledged it. Yeah, no, she, as, if, as if it's something natural, right? Um, that happens every day, to, you know, to be on your panties in front of your students. And we went along. So we just, we just, yeah, it's an interesting thing to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I kind of felt the same way. You know what I mean? Well, what, what's going on then with the, why did you leave the other psychologist, psychotherapist, whatever? Okay. Uh, I, I left because, um, well, first it was the end of the academic year, so I was no longer here. And I felt that I wanted something harder, you know. <laughs> not, not. <laughs> <laughs> With the preview was one. It was sort of a, you know, soft and spoken thing. It's, um, you know, get back in your feet. Mm -hmm. Um, let's try to make you functional, this kind of approach. And, you know, that's, that's not really my thing. I want something like punch you in the face and, you know, just acknowledge that you are fucked up. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> totally. I'm, I yeah. mean, I know, I know you and you're weird, but who isn't, but I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're fucked no. up. Totally fucked up. Totally fucked up. You cannot, you cannot even imagine what's going on between the firefighter, <laughs> the exile, and the manager. <laughs> um, but if you want to have an idea, you know, just, just go to Pornhub. <laughs> no, totally fucked up, dude. <clears throat> All right, we'll vote boat for Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have a firefighter, a manager, and an exile? <laughs> vote for Pedro. <laughs> and are these are these three um, like these three categories? Is this something that? Is this something that your particular therapist came up with, or is this like a whole school, like <laughs> the school of uh, firefighters, managers, and uh, exiles? <laughs> it would have been funny if, if the guy just uh, had come up with it, but uh, no, it's 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 a whole thing. It's like a, I think it's a discipline. I don't know if you can call it that. Um, and it's always those three characters. It's always these three characters. Yes, always. Uh, which is which is funny, right? And is there like, according to the theory, is like, are you trying to achieve balance? Like, there's always one that's in charge. Like, what's what's the story inside you with those three people? Yes. So right. So there's always one that is in charge, and the way that they sort of dispute power among them kind of determines where you are at. So it is pretty normal that they dispute it. It's quite natural that, you know, at times one of them is on the top. It's like an ecosystem that is self-managed. But, you know, shit hits the fan when non one of them gets out of control, basically. When one of them just takes the keys to the car and... Goes on a work binge. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Try to think about the exile on the workbench. Wait, so look at me. So which one do you have? Uh, are you in a good balance, or do you have one in charge right now? Who? No, no, no. no. I, I think that my firefighter is huge. <laughs> <laughs> and who's who's supposed to be the manager is that who's i guess that's a stupid question who's supposed to be in charge yes the manager uh, <laughs> shows how shows how good i'm doing <laughs> of course you want the firefighter in charge i guess that supposedly they are you know they're supposed to be sort of you know i didn't say balanced because that's unrealistic but find somehow a good place to be among themselves, like negotiate to be ordered to be on good terms. But my firefighter just happens to be um, proportionally huge. How does that, like based on what? You know, based on the stuff that, uh, that I, uh, you know, uh, fantasies and, and mental stuff, things like that. So the firefighter is trying to, to make everything cool so there's no problems yeah 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 that's pretty much it yeah actually that's it you know try to to keep things under control what do you mean based on fantasies like you fantasize about everything being not on fire or <laughs> <laughs> i mean i just fantasize about firefighters generally <laughs> yeah. putting down fires with their dicks inside the <laughs> pen hop pecan <laughs> 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 do you ever feel like uh, as a literature student i don't know if i fit into that category but go ahead all right as a firefighter aficionado <laughs> do you ever feel that uh because some people learn how to interpret that it's easy to create these stories i, I mean i'm just opening a door i'm not trying to discredit psychology mm -hmm. or anything <laughs> but it's just mm -hmm. you know when you when you've studied literature and you've seen the logical twists and turns that people can do mm -hmm. to make something fit the story they want to fit like yeah. do yeah. you ever feel like it's be easy for a therapist yeah. to try and find something to make it fit into that story when if you don't look at it through that lens there's some completely different stuff going on can you yeah uh do you mean like also do you also mean um us having been involved with literature and stuff like that trying to make a more you know convincing narrative perhaps is it was that implied in a, like you know because we're, we're we're quite used to that to create narratives it wasn't implied in the question, but you're right. I think that's something that we can't uh, yeah. escape. So that that would yeah. be like a double problem, also. Yes. So yeah. So the you know the the guy is trying to you know make a narrative where the parts fit, and we know exactly how to feed that sort of logic. Is, is um, right? I'll just make a clear example. I remember I wrote uh, a paper about uh, uh -huh. about a movie, Soy Cuba. And I had right. said that the movie followed the like perfectly followed the structure of Todorov in terms of what makes a narrative, like there's initial state, you know, disruption of equilibrium, awareness of disruption, back to equilibrium. I don't know. So in my head it was clear. Like, I, you know, I could have almost argued that whoever made the movie was looking at the manual and said, well, now we got to do this. Now we got to do that. And because that's kind of like what you're taught to do, where you kind of set out to prove something rather than, rather than mm -hmm. set out looking for things. At least that's how I, what I felt I was being taught over there. I don't feel that way now. Um, so, and I remember that, uh, the professor told me, it seems like you're really trying to make this fit, to make everything fit into that theory. And you did, but nobody mm -hmm. uses that theory anymore. And, uh, and I was kind of angry. I was like, what do you mean? I found the perfect thing. But then, you know, it was like a learning moment because if you want 
you know, it's like a filter. And if you want, you could find a way mm -hmm. to make things fit mm -hmm. into it. Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you force things mm -hmm. into like a square peg in a round hole or whatever the expression is. Um, mm -hmm. But you could decide to ignore certain things so that the story you're mm -hmm. making still follows a narrative that you wish to mm -hmm. uh, complete. And I've always mm -hmm. wondered, I've, I've, mm -hmm. I'm... No, I'm not absolutely. against therapy, and, I've, and, I've, and lately I've been thinking about uh, going because uh, we've been thinking about having kids, uh -huh. and uh, I really don't want to pass any of that shit along. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know that that's you know that condoms are probably a best option <laughs> <laughs> and cheaper than therapy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. No, no, I, but you know what? So, but it's just, I've been thinking about that. Like, it, it would feel like a, you know, what's the expression? Like, entre gitanos no nos leemos la mano? Uh, <laughs> yes. You know? I know exactly. Yes. Uh, I, I have, I, I cannot translate it, but yeah, totally. Like a gypsy won't read another gypsy's hand uh, because you kind of both know. I'm, and of course, again, I'm not saying psychology yeah. is that but this whole game of interpretation and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, we're in the business of interpretation as well right mm -hmm. um so you, you you know the you know the cheap tricks you know the old traps and that kind of stuff because everything's a penis that's that's too <laughs> that's too easy <laughs> <laughs> and and i have played into that myself you know in, few times. in your essays yeah. or in therapy? In therapy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in therapy. In therapy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably in, in essays, obviously, um, also. But in therapy. But you know what? What might be interesting, based on something that I just said, that these kind of interpretations get outdated. You know, it, it just said that somehow you might be coming up with a framework that no one uses anymore. Yeah, Totoro was too retro. That's what... Uh... Right. Can, you, can you imagine that in therapy? Because I have thought about that. That's that's okay. what's going on with society right now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just imagine that you go to a therapist, you are either a 90-year-old or a 30-ish year old, but that is really, really into the Todorov-esque narratives about psychology. So you start telling your therapist really, you know, things that we would now consider to be misogynist, sexist, and racist, but you think that that's the kind of narrative that he's trying to listen to. And so you construct a persona and you, you know, you perform yourself expecting him to validate and to make sense of that. But at the end of the appointment, he's just like shocked and he says, Mr. Pedro, I, 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 I was not expecting this. You are a asshole. That's <laughs> no, but you know, this makes sense. I have, uh, I have these penis problem and I uh, have these um, I don't know uh, tendency to be attracted by men that I would like to correct <laughs> something like that and I'm pretty sure it's just an edible thing <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> you see what I you see my point <laughs> do you know uh, I don't know why I know I remember this so well but that an anagram of your name is Oedipal Dream. Yeah, Animal Dream. I sent it to you once. True, true, true. And you could do a whole thing with that. Yeah, I, I should write something about that. Probably. You know how it is cool to start your essays nowadays with a little vignette or a little story about yourself? I wouldn't know. I haven't done any fucking writing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give me an anagram for your name. Give me an anagram for your name. Uh, one that I was expecting to become true is Becado Perros. Okay. Now, <laughs> but it did, it did not work. 
<laughs> well, I have one that will actually work. Is that um, my name, Pedro Escobar Uribe. There's a mm-hmm. fraction of it that if you remove mm-hmm. Ovaru, it says Pedro hey. Escribe. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that's a classy one. Somebody told me that when we were high one time, and I was like, "What? <laughs> How did I never see that?" <laughs> <laughs> it was good old moly. Yeah. Um. So then, all right. So then, the therapy is going uh good. Yes, pretty much. Pretty much, it's really cool. One other reason why I like it is because it's on the other side of the city. So I have to cross Providence to get there. And doing that, I started using electric bikes because it's not worth just to drive there, you know, and it's really it's hard to... Find. not worth using your own muscles. Of course. <laughs> of course. I'm just taking like one hour walking or something like that. Um, I'm a slow walker, as you know. Yes. Well, not the the last couple of times I've seen you, you were running. It was crazy. I, I, I Yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was therapy. It's probably the <laughs> firefighter. It's the firefighting, firefighter trying to get some. No, but I, I've, I've, I've started using these electric bikes, and it's amazing. Have you ever, have you ever wrote, do you say wrote in the past? Uh, rope. At? Rope. Rope? Yes, have you ever <laughs> rope an electric bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, is it like completely electric? Because there's some they put here in Paris where... No, 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 it's, it's not completely electric. Like you, you, you're still pedaling, but you get a little help. Yes, which is a huge help actually, for, especially when you start. So when you start the bike... The first, um, you know, the first paddle that you, first stroke on the paddle, let's say, it really has this, like, um, it accelerates really fast. It's it's incredible. You just like something that makes you get out of your neighborhood, that like changes things away from school, all that stuff? Is this therapy now as well? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Does it make you angry? <laughs> that's a, that's exactly the kind of stuff that my therapist would say. Actually, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 good to get out of the neighborhood. Um, you know, there's the physical sensation of acceleration with the with the electric bike that it's also quite uh, stimulating. Do you have these? Um, you know these things that you uh, you don't paddle. Um, yeah, they're invading. The how do you call city. that in English? The, the, um, that machine. I don't know. Patin del diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you call it in Spanish? In Mexico, <laughs> at least. Cool. The devil's cool. skate. <laughs> um, I, I I can imagine the devil <laughs> coming to earth <laughs> on one of those. Yeah, they have them everywhere, and uh, I mean it's. Eh, I don't know. Do we want to start this conversation? It's lately I've been getting very, very annoyed at this. Is, oh my God, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to talk. <laughs> wow. So, well, it's it's uh, okay. It's good. It's nice. It's mm-hmm. easy. Uh, you just pick it up. You put it anywhere. That's it. The problem is mm-hmm. that the city is not ready for it, mm-hmm. and those things are very flimsy. It's very easy to fall. I've seen, mm. I've seen like uh, somebody fall here on my street and just like eat shit. Uh, so there's no regulations wow. on it. They're taking advantage of that. So people don't need helmets. People don't need anything. And they go mm-hmm. on the street. So if mm-hmm. something happens to people, like if somebody falls on a bus lane, they could get run over. Right. And they're just taking advantage of that because it's a little like, you know, there's nothing regulating it now. Mm-hmm. And you need to have a smartphone for that. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things where those that can take advantage mm-hmm. of it, and uh, mm-hmm. people that don't have a smartphone can't use it. And I think it'd be cool if you yeah. just stopped cars because there's no 
point in having cars in Paris. It was a good transit mm -hmm. system, and now you have these annoying things. I'd be happy if right. the streets were just for that, for bikes and those things. Mm -hmm. I'm just being grumpy. It's just annoying when somebody yeah. somebody's on the fucking uh, on the sidewalk too. Or... Because I actually remember when I no no I totally get that, and and it also annoys me that you know these things at least here they are full of advertisement. So you see these bikes, and they're basically covered with stickers advertising big companies, and not only the bikes owning the the, the company that owns the bikes, but also you know other stuff, and um, and it's 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 annoying too you know. And at the beginning, when I first arrived in Paris, I remember people owned those type of, uh, hmm. those type of, what the fuck are they called? I don't know, trottinette. And every, I, and um, I found it very funny. And it, it's something that I really liked about Paris because it's something that I never thought I would see. It didn't, you know, you, mm -hmm. you know, you fantasize, you romanticize the city. And I show up and there's a bunch of worried adults writing those things to work. Yeah. Um, they right. weren't electric. It was just like them, like the ones that kids have. And I found that very funny and endearing to see like a, uh -huh. an old Asian lady yeah. and like a guy in a business suit and all the just pedaling like, oh shit, I'm late for work. Uh, yeah. it, it, and then, it gave a funny look yeah. to the city. And then all of a sudden this electric stuff started coming up and now everybody has it. Yeah. yeah. And then there's, there's, there's another annoying thing, which is, once people start seeing that as really cool, they want to go to work on those just to be seen arriving at work <laughs> on one of those on one of those things. You know what I mean? It's like um, coolness capital. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you want our you 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 want our, your colleagues to notice that you are arriving riding one of those. Otherwise, it's it's um, you know it's a uh, it's a wasted opportunity. And I, I get annoyed because I think I, I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I think that they can be unsafe because anything that you, that you, you know, you should only go as fast as your feet let you, uh, if uh -huh. you're in a machine like that, which is so simple because it's so simple. If you move your hands a little bit, it turns around, you fall down. So, you know, it's like yeah. the bicycle, even on the bicycle, sometimes you go faster than you can manage. That you have some control. True, true. You have some control over true. it. Whereas on those things, you're like you're just yeah. standing and. So I, mm -hmm. I get the, uh, I get annoyed that people are getting away. Like the, whoever has it, mm -hmm. some people will start mm -hmm. getting hurt, and uh, it will only mm -hmm. be after they get hurt that they regulate it. I can see your increasing interest in, interest on, on on safety. Yeah, I don't know if it's safety because I'm getting old and I look at kids and I think about having kids and I like uh, I worry about people hurting themselves, uh -huh. or if it's class uh -huh. anger and I'm just annoyed at the uh, people getting away with shit. <laughs> right, right. I think that's your manager talking. The manager? <laughs> yeah, my manager. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought you meant like my work manager. Uh... <laughs> no, no, I mean your internal <laughs> manager. It's interesting. Yeah. Speaking of the streets in Paris, I, I have to ask you this. Have you already used those urinals that have been um that were on the news? Yes, they're a goddamn blessing. Really? Yes. Whoever I, I saw some but... stupid people in the US complaining, uh shut the fuck up, you don't live here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it's a fucking blessing because really? yes because otherwise you have nowhere to pee and it's uh, stupid like it's the most basic of functions you're gonna pee you have to pee there's nothing you can do so like uh, people people do not hold it i don't hold it uh over the years uh like it took me three years to train myself so now i can make it uh, you know, I run. But my first year, I was peeing everywhere because I couldn't. If I went out at night yeah. and I drank, I just couldn't make it home. Like, I couldn't. Right. And right. Uh, right. these things are lifesavers. Ooh. And, and how about concealing your dick? Because there were some issues raised, raised regarding that, right? If somebody wants to show their dick, they're going to show it. They're not going to use that as an excuse. 
Right, right. But can you but can you hide it properly inside the thing? Well, well. Pe- first of all, people are not looking at it because they know what you're doing. So yeah. it's not it's not like a it's not like women are in the street like oh I bet I could see that guy's <laughs> dick while he pissed. So I don't think anybody's trying to look at it because <laughs> uh, it's a very dirty thing. <laughs> Um, right. The only bad thing is that it's, it has three things. So sometimes you have to stare at another guy's eyes while you. <laughs> that that's my only problem with it. Uh, maybe you could say I shouldn't look into his eyes, but he's right in front of me. <laughs> uh, but no, no, no. They 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 do they do a good job covering. You're not. It's it's like a circle divided in three. So it's got a good angle and they're not everywhere. They're like along the, they're along the canal and along the, the river. So in areas, only in areas where people go to drink and there's absolutely nothing around. Do you hang out around those, those areas? Uh, not too often. No, no. Uh, but like at tourist, touristy spots, isn't it? The river? Yes. The canal? No, the canal is just, uh, oh wait, never mind. I don't want people to know. (laughs) Ah. <laughs> the canal is uh, very boring. <laughs> no, no, the canal gets gets packed, and uh, obviously all the bars around there are not going to be letting everybody get in. And people go there and they take their beer and wine, and it's nice that you have an option. Also, uh-huh. having those allows for the toilets, uh, the actual toilets, to be a little bit cleaner, which okay. is better for uh, women. Right. 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 No, that's it. So everybody wins. I don't know why uh, right. us Americans right. are right. making a big fuzz out of it. I mean, yeah, it's always the same thing. I've seen some some crazy, crazy comments from Americans on YouTube videos about Paris. Like what? What's what's the craziest thing? Uh, there was this video. Um, these old videos from the the Lumiere brothers that somebody that they remastered and they made into this, this beautiful movie and it's the oldest films ever made and you're looking at it and you can't believe it you're seeing Paris at the end of the 19th century and it's just uh, you know it's uh, it's very touching like I cried mm-hmm. when I was watching the movie it's it's just uh, it's as far back as you can go in mm-hmm. mov- in moving history you know it's like the equivalent mm-hmm. of a uh, of the caves the cave right. paintings you you can't go any further than that to see a human moving and reacting in real time and uh it's just a beautiful thing it's just the city but at the same time you just see people being people and it kind of demystifies it it's not the past it's a now just like right now you know and then uh, somebody uploaded it to youtube and you just see a bunch of like jackass is like oh paris before all the fucking immigrants and uh it's like where where the fuck did that come from and in english so like it's not even somebody in french saying it it's just in english so it's just a bunch of people like yeah paris is gonna get what they deserve like why what what's the uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, what if it was true uh you know too bad think- for those of us here shut up and stay out of it like i don't understand the the mentality, I, I really don't get it. Yeah. You know, if somebody's interested, look for those videos and you'll find some strange comments. Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah. When are you going to finish your dissertation? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, that's, that's the, um, the perfect topic after discussing urinals, public urinals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, 2020, maybe 2021. What's the what was the topic? Time. <laughs> <laughs> we saying that with a laugh makes it laughable. <laughs> I, I What's didn't. The topic time. I didn't mean to, but when I said it, I realized it sounded funny. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, I'm um, I'm thinking about the idea of time, speed, and acceleration. In the early 20th century, um, 1900 to 1930, in um, Angola, Portugal, and Brazil. 
specifically through travelogues, that is, um, you know, books written in English by either American or English or sometimes Canadian travelers that went to one of these places and wrote a book about it. So it's how people wrote about time in those places? Yes. 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 Time and acceleration, specifically. Sometimes I, I, I think more in terms of time, sometimes I think more in terms of acceleration. But I'm going to try to dovetail the two concepts. I don't know if I'll be able to, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. I'm very cynical about PhDs. I, I look at them with a lot of respect. And at the same time, a lot of... Uh... You don't have to. You know. I have no respect or, or, or even self-respect for the matter. <laughs> no, I, I mean, like, I can, I can somehow have both feelings at the same time of uh, admiration and, uh, and respect for the dedication to the topic and, like, the intellectual pursuit of it. And at the same time, just the, the, just the waste, the waste of time and resources. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get I get the waste of um, time and resources. At the same time, that's precisely why I like it. <laughs> why? To be honest. You know, if, if you think about it for a second, there's not a lot of jobs where you are paid to travel and, you know, look at books and pictures for four or five days and then hang out with with people meeting new people you know going to the restaurants and then asking the receipt to get reimbursed you get uh, reimbursed yes the fuck? yes yes yeah that, you know that's that's the best part and you meet new people you hang out with new people two weeks ago i went to uh, michigan for the first time for a congress in Ann Arbor, which is good, which is very, very good. And, uh, you know, it's the fun part is getting to know new people, uh, you know, what they call networking. But really, it's, it's, it's about, you know, getting to know new people. It's, over the summer, I went to Brazil. We have not talked since I went to Brazil, have we? Uh, no, I don't think we've had a... A conversation well, and even then we weren't really that talking would be another podcast. yeah because i was all like worried with that translation and then we went to japan like maybe two three days after you exactly. you arrived in brazil it, it was it was amazingly enriching and fun yeah i heard i heard it's getting better <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons why this is all so frightening and distraughting is because, you know, you see the places where you were at and where we were having fun and drinking and talking to people and dancing and listening to music. And everyone was just hugging each other, like literally, you know, people on the streets hugging each other and dancing and offering drinks and kissing each other. And, and then you see the same places on Facebook videos and you see white guys uh, singing these military chants uh, and with weapons and, you know, doing the, doing Nazi greetings and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's very, very disturbing because, you know, I was there in some of those places and everyone was just listening to music and chilling and having fun. And all of a sudden, you know, you see these fascist images coming out of the precisely some same places and, and, and neighborhoods. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, I don't know, you saw my pepper plant, right? I did saw your pepper plant how is it going uh it's doing good it's doing good <laughs> uh but yeah, it got this uh yeah. i think i told you or maybe i didn't tell you but maybe at least told you because she finds it funny that like i keep 
just learning life lessons just from taking care of that pepper plant. Mm -hmm. Are you going to talk about the the part of where you jerk off your flowers? <laughs> <laughs> with a toothbrush? With, with my vibrator, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just to uh, make it clear, this is not a Harvey Weinstein jerking off into the plants reference. <laughs> it is a pollinating reference where I use my electric toothbrush to gently rub the top of all the flowers so that it releases the pollen because uh, all of the flowers on my pepper tree are uh, uh, hermaphrodite. So uh, I do that and I get peppers in my living room. Um, Anyway, it's gotten really, you know, it's doing great. It, it even grew a pepper this, this just, month. Just so that, you know, people who are listening to this can understand, obviously, living room, toothbrush, and peppers are sexual metaphors. None of this is ritual. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... peppers in my living room. <laughs> I like to refer to my anus as the living room. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway i was uh i was in my anus and uh <laughs> and uh i was looking at the and there was a lot more uh there was a lot of more like tiny flies around more than usual <laughs> flying around the anus um mm -hmm. Uh, like fruit flies? Yeah, I, I, so I thought it was fruit flies. We got rid of the uh, fruit or whatever, and uh, it was like gnats. And uh, so I got obsessed again. I did some research, and apparently, like, fucking gnats, they, they grow on the surface of the plant. I always saw that there was little flies moving around the top layer of soil. And I try not to mm -hmm. mess with it a lot because I eat the peppers. So uh, there's not mm -hmm. nothing chemical in it. I take care of it. Uh, and I had put some mm -hmm. banana peels inside the dirt when i changed mm -hmm. pots so i thought like maybe mm -hmm. it was some of that like it was decomposing and uh some some of that was going on but then it got really bad mm -hmm. there was a lot of them and uh, mm -hmm. so i checked and apparently um so what they do is that they they, re they lay these eggs and then when you when you water the plant they lay the eggs like mm -hmm. in the top i think like top two inches of soil and that's where they live and they're kind of like seeds so if you don't water it they won't come to life you know and you just wait for them to die but of course you need to water your plant so you water it and then all these little larvae come out and the larvae go and eat the root of the pepper and they're really small it doesn't really do much it's an ecosystem you know mm -hmm. if it was outside there'd be some other animals eating those fucking little flies so there'd be some sort of control but mm -hmm. there it is there's a tree inside my living room aka my anus and there's all these <laughs> flies in the topsoil um and uh, i don't know i was just sitting there s staring at it for a while and i was just understood like things were are not going to be okay uh it's just it's right. just the way we, things are like we're no different things would work out like you would look at the gnats and say like, don't fuck it up, gnats. You have this giant tree, you know, uh, uh -huh. get your Malthusian shit in order and uh, stay at a certain level and you'll have free food forever. But of course, they're just fucking, uh, they're programmed to reproduce and eventually they're going to kill the plant. Unless I, you think so? Well, I mean, I'm gonna take care of it, but we have nobody to take care of us. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, it just, it just hit me all of a sudden. Like, yep, this whole thing about like the world going to shit, but maybe if we all get together and we stop eating meat. And... No, 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 yeah. no, not gonna happen. And uh, and it was just, it was like this very clear moment. Like, all right, yeah, we're fucked, and uh, we've been getting more and more fucked over time, and uh, we might be getting close. Maybe everybody thought. Maybe everybody has thought this at some point in history, so who knows? But it will happen. There, there won't be a control. There won't be a consensus. There won't be understanding. It's just going to be a bunch of fucking animals uh, doing things until they kill their life support. And then uh, it's not going to matter. And that's it.
No, I, I totally, uh, yeah, that's how I come to see things increasingly. And, you know, it's, it's been always like that, if you think about it. It's been always like that. You know? Yeah. Uh, people have continuously throughout, you know, the time been fucked up over and over again. And, you know, most of them eventually die. Actually, all of them eventually die, to be more accurate. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes it's more obvious than others. You know, sometimes you can see it acting in a more obvious way, but I, I, I think it's pretty much it. You know, the flies are going to come, they're going to lay their eggs until a certain, you know, for a certain time you will be able to manage the damage. And you'll be able to remove the eggs from your anus. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the day will come where you cannot remove them anymore. And, you know. And my anus is just going to be full of flies. <laughs> <laughs> full of death and flies. <laughs> exactly. I think, I think we can start looking for a title for this, for this episode. I just poured yeah. myself my last uh, mezcal. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, so it has to be something related to peppers and the panopticon. We talked about a couple of things. We talked about Japan, pinopticon, panopticon, uh, PhDs, firefighters, uh, managers, mm -hmm. therapy. Uh uh puñetas <laughs> we did um we, we covered a lot of ground death just inevitable death yes yes um, so we can say that we we happy note let's see so i had a couple things i wrote down i like fists of fury <laughs> uh how about you I like I, 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 I tend to favor the idea of something with pinopticon on it. Okay, pinopticon. Pinopticon and death go very well hand in hand in a way. Mm -hmm. Like pinopticon of death. Does that sound like a metal band? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, All right, you want to go with that? Peppers. I, I, I'd love to have peppers on the title as well. Can you think of something with peppers? Peppers, salt and peppers, salt on the cod. Wait, also, also, maybe this can give us some time to think about mm -hmm. uh, about it. Did you read what I asked you to read? I'm starting to to lose hope with that. I'm still going to keep the title of the podcast, which I forgot to introduce at the beginning. Yeah. Hey, you're listening to Rich Chocolatey Goodness. <laughs> Actually, yeah, and I have it here. I printed out, dude, the, the, the thing that you sent. Thank um, you. Yeah, you're welcome. I took it very seriously. The question is what I thought about it. Well, the, does the... I need to figure out if I, if I should introduce the title of the show, if I should just do that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Is it evident? Or should I ask every guest if they understand why? Or I'm not sure because I, 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 I was hesitant whether you were making a reference what it is is it's a stupid word i mean it's rich chocolatey goodness mm -hmm. it's a very silly part mm -hmm. of a nice book mm -hmm. and i found that to be in my narrative mm -hmm. a good way to summarize how i go through life <laughs> making lowbrow jokes using highbrow references mm -hmm. No, it makes yeah, it makes perfect sense. Well, the other part of it was that um, it's making reference to that part of the book, um, the crying of Lot Forty Nine. But um, the character there has this fantasy of hearing, like if he could move everybody's timelines, so that if somebody says rich chocolatey goodness, he could move everybody's timeline so that it's aligned. And then you just hear this giant chorus of everybody who has ever said it saying it at the same time. So I wanted to have all of my friends mm -hmm. say it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then create that chorus. 
mm-hmm. adding one voice to another to another until I'll have all of my friends saying rich chocolatey goodness. That's it's it's a great idea. And it's like a doctoral dissertation. It's <laughs> a lot of effort for <laughs> a very specific a very specific goal that maybe nobody cares about but uh it's really cool it's it's funny because you know i'm as i'm listening to you i'm thinking that's precisely one of the things that we are doing in one of these seminars that i'm taking it's it's precisely working with this idea of synchronization that you are referring to in a very specific bodily way you know when we say the same precise words and we try to synchronize to each other, which now that I think about it, it's it's quite a funny thing. We are uh, about 4,000 kilometers away and we are saying the, the same two words in an absolute synchronous time. Yeah, I mean, well... It would be funny to add a metronym to that part of the podcast. A metronome? You know, those, those, those kind of clocks... That people that are playing the piano use that do like tick tack. Yeah, metronome. But to what part? Tick tack. Tic-tac. To the beginning or to the beginning and the end. To have a metronome just playing, right? I don't know. <laughs> because that's. I was thinking more me. like music. <laughs> 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 Something a little bit more upbeat. <laughs> Right, right, and right. I, I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's find the title. Mm. Okay. Uh, is it Pepper in the Closet to 80s? Does that sound like? Originally, I had said two Pedros walk into a bar and two Peppers walk into a closet. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, but we didn't even explore the whole two peppers walking to a bar. But the two peppers walking to a closet. I think we just started too strong. Pinopticon is a perfect. So, uh... Are you peeing right now? No, but somebody either above or below me is, <laughs> and okay. that tube is somewhere in this closet. <laughs> yeah. This is probably the funniest moment of the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very. <laughs> It's very annoying because <laughs> one, uh, you know, I've g- gone through great lengths to try and figure out the good sound, uh, <laughs> sound atmosphere, but uh, it's hard. You can't, it's nothing I could do against that. It's in the closet. And two, this is not the funniest moment of the podcast. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it is very funny. <laughs> you know, just listening to that is actually very funny. You were you I, pee too, no? I, I heard water. I did, I, I did pee at some point, but I, I did not make it very obvious. I, it was very know. obvious. I think you were like... Was it? Yeah, there was water while you were talking, so... I mean, but I was not inside the closet. That's the thing. I was in the restroom. What? I, I mean, pee in the closet is funnier than pee in the restroom. How about running around with your pepper out of your pants? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That that's that's a very strong candidate, I guess. Running round in circles with a pepper out. I like that. We're we're, we're digging too far, man. We're digging too far. Uh, I'll anything dis- with pepper and running with some kind of genitalia. Anyway. <laughs> well, peppers already have the genitalia. Any psychologist will tell you that. Yes, yes. It's nice and yes. green, and it burns like hell. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and firefighters, you know, the, the thing is, there's a very interesting narrative of implicit stuff, you know, between peppers, firefighters, genitalia. <laughs> Hot, fire. <laughs> yes. There's like a, an underground narrative to all of these. All right. We can also go the other way we, because we talked about, uh, you talked about that therapy and we completely ignored the exile. Mm-hmm. So we could talk, call it Peppers in Exile. Pepper in Exile, did you say? Peppers in Exile, because there's two of us. True. All right. Can you do a sign off? Thanks for listening to Rich, Rich Chocolatey Goodness. goodness.
Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>